This is problem number 12 from the section 4.5 covering L'Hopital's rule. Um, this one is really easy. If, you're, if you get this on the test and you don't know what cosecant or what value cosecant is, um, well, first of all, they're asking us to find the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 of 1 minus sine theta over um, cosecant theta. So if you have this on a test and you don't know the value of cosecant theta at pi over 2 or secant theta at pi, pi over 2, just remember that cosecant is 1 over sine and, co, um, cos and secant is 1 over cosine. So refer back to your unit circle to figure out the values. So on the unit circle, we have 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. At 0 pi, sine is, uh, cosine is 1 and sine is 0. Pi over 2, we have um, sine, cosine is 0, pi is 1, or excuse me, cosine is 0 and sine is 1. At pi, we have cosine is negative 1, sine is 0. And at 3 pi over 2, we have cosine is 0 and pi is, uh, or sine is negative 1. And we're looking at this point right here on the unit circle. What's happening? Well, when we, as we get closer to, to pi over 2, we see that cosine is going to approach the value of 1. So we have 1 minus 1 on the top. And we know that cosecant is 1 over sine, right? 1 over sine of theta. Sorry, I should write this. Limit as theta approaches pi over 2. This is going to approach cosecant of, uh, so 1 over sine, and it's going to be just approaching 1. So 1 over 1 is equal to 1. So this value, the limit as theta approaches pi over 2, it's going to be 0 over 1, which is equal to 0. Now, this is an important problem because just because we're looking at section 4.5 and we're studying L'Hopital's rule, it would really be um, it would really be easy to just start blindly applying L'Hopital's rule. But L'Hopital's rule does not work if the um, if the func if the limit doesn't approach a specific undeterminate form, and that indeterminate form is um, a quotient form. So in this case, it approached something finite. It has a real limit, and we didn't have to do L'Hopital's rule. And in fact, if on an exam you did L'Hopital's rule, you would get the wrong answer, and it does not work. So this is proof, or proof by counterexample, that L'Hopital's rule works only if and only if your, um, lim the, your function is of the, if an indeterminate form in a quotient fashion. So. This is not indeterminate form. We're going to prove by counterexample that it does not work. Okay. Just to make a point out of it, false. Okay, L'Hopital's rule does not work. Take the limit of the top, right? L'Hopital's rule says that if you are in an indeterminate form, then the derivative, the limit of the function, will be the limit of the quotient of its derivatives. So, if I take the if I blindly apply L'Hopital's rule without checking the, uh, the limit at the, the point that we're looking at, then I would take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So the 1 goes away, Deriv derivative of sine is cosine, so we have negative cosine on top. Now cosecant, if, you don't, if you're on an exam and you're freaking out because you don't remember what, that the derivative of cosecant is negative cotangent, cosecant, you can always derive the, um, the answer. So I'm going to do it off here. Derivative of, um, well, cosecant is 1 over sine theta. And the derivative of that, d, d theta, is going to be the, um, the denominator sine of theta times the derivative of the numerator, which is 0 minus the derivative of the, uh, minus the numerator times the derivative of 
the denominator, and that's cosine of theta, all over the denominator squared. That's sine squared of theta. That will give us 0 minus cosine, so we have a negative cosine theta over sine squared of theta. That is equal to negative cosine over sine, and that is equal to uh, times 1 over sine. Cosine of sine is cotangent. 1 over sine is cosecant. Okay? But I'm going to leave it in the format of cosine over sine times 1 over sine because I really don't have committed to memory what's happening at cotangent and cosecant, but I know my unit circle really well. So if you're in a test um, and you're freaking out because it's a, a test without calculator or notes, reduce everything to sine and cosine. So, um, so this is going to be cosine over sine squared of theta. So in the denominator, derivative of cosecant, we have negative cosine theta over sine squared of theta. Well, the cosines, uh, the cosines cancel out if we just multiply top and bottom by sine squared of theta over cosine of theta to get rid of the fraction in the bottom. We have sine squared of theta over cosine of theta. The cosines cancel out, and we have sine squared of theta. So then we're left with the limit as, zero, as theta goes to pi over 2 of um, the negatives cancel out. So we're left with sine squared of theta. And as sine approaches pi from either direction, sine is approaching the value of 1. And so we're, we have derived the conclusion that the limit as theta goes to pi over 2 of sine squared of theta is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. And that is false. And we got the false conclusion because we applied L'Hopital's rule when it was not an in and indeterminate form. So the takeaway is, in an exam, just because you're testing on L'Hopital's rule, don't assume that it applies. Make sure you test for the condition. Um, it has to be, it must be in an indeterminate form. If it's an indeterminate form of infinity minus infinity, you have to combine them to obtain a quotient. And that's the only time when it's um, accurate. Okay.